Brandon, why are there all these charges for just over $200 from Acceleration Car Racing's website? That's because AKR gives you free shipping on orders of $200 or more within the continental US. Okay, but I thought you were just getting a pair of gloves. That's what, 70 bucks? But if I'm getting a new pair of gloves, I might as well get a new pair of shoes to match. And then on top of that, I'll get a neck brace because with the shipping, it's basically free. Yeah, I do not think the math checks out on that. Everything you need, all in one place and shipped to your door for free for orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Spend responsibly. Shop AKR.com. Are you ready to get behind the wheel? From Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar, all the pros start here. more information, check us out online at mccarding.com or call us and go racing today. Welcome race fans, for those of you tuning in with us today from in the paddock, those of you watching live on Car Chaser Grassroots, we are underway for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Uh, group one on track, we have uh, Supermasters, Heat one out front, viewers uh, 46, P1. Actually, I'm sorry, that's Harlman. Harlman P1. Uh, we've been mix, uh, operating in some mixed conditions for the morning. Qualifying was a bit of a shakeup. The track appears to be uh, coming to as the circuit dries. Temperatures rising to about 75 degrees this afternoon, which should make for some interesting racing as we get into some of our larger groups. 153 total entries today for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge. Uh, really excited to have everyone here as we get the action underway with our first round of heat racing. Cart number 18, Harlman getting a or getting a pretty solid lead here over Ewers. Muskoff rounding out your top three. Harlman went 1.4 seconds faster that last lap with the changing conditions. Setup's going to really play a big factor in this race day. As uh, the track conditions are changing, mechanics are going to have to, you know, pay attention to what's going on out there and, and kind of make their best guess as to what's going to work in the, the longer sessions as we get out of qualifying and into these longer heat races. Viewers closing that gap up to Harlman. A little bit of bobble there in the infield section. They come back onto the straightaway and into the new part of the circuit. That time by Ewers was fastest. Ewers goes purple at a 58.8. Ewers working his way back up to Harlman. Maybe we're seeing a, a little bit of a lower tire pressure situation here. Ewers playing the long game, trying to make sure the cart's working here at the end of this heat race. Harlman with a good run off the new section of the track into the Monza Bank. Ewers right on his tail, though. Let's see if Ewers looks to the inside going into the hairpin. No. 
There's, they'll stay in line. Harlman P1, Ewers P2. Harlman with that early lead. Let's see if he can hold him off. Harlman looks to be struggling to hold on to that race car in the middle of the infield. Again, with these track conditions changing, it's hard to tell what parts of the track are going to dry up and what parts are going to stay wet for longer. Ewers right to the bumper of Harlman as we enter the new section of the track at the end of the straightaway. A little bit of a bobble out of Ewers. He's going to lose a couple cart lengths to Harlman. They're going to open that gap back up. Ewers hoping he can reel that gap back in as Harlman goes through those puddles into the backstretch. What a good run onto the backstretch for Harlman. He's checking Ewers by about four cart lengths through that section there. A little bit of a bobble out of Harlman going into the Monza. Didn't seem to cost him any time as he's got about five car lengths. Back to Ewers. Ewers running a little bit of a narrower entry into some of these corners. Again, maybe just a little bit more confident in the setup with the mixed conditions here at the racetrack. He seems to be able to make this old section of the infield work a little bit better for him. Ewers in P2 in the red and white Burrell. Harlman P1 in what appears to be a Comet Eagle, and that looks like three laps to go from your starter. Two to go. I'm sorry. Two to go. Ewers back to the bumper of Harlman. They're going to battle it out here at the end of the session. Harlman again gets a good run out of that infield section of the new part of the circuit and onto the backstretch. Didn't quite gap Ewers as much that lap, though only about a cart length as Ewers picks it up. A little bit lower gear going down that straightaway and into the Monza. Ewers is back to the bumper of Harlman. This is shaping up to be a great battle for Heat 1 here at Supermasters. The Briggs Supermasters class presented by Carbon Tech. Uh, obviously today we're going to talk about all of our partners and thanks to everyone who makes karting happen. That's very important as a, as a group that we support the companies. As we come to one lap to go, white flag is out for Harlman. Viewers with just about a cart disadvantage as they enter the new part of the track and right to the bumper of Harlman under braking. This is going to be an exciting finish here for Heat 1 and Supermasters. Ewers right to the bumper, sets up a little wide. Will he be able to stay on Harlman as we get back to this back section of the track? Harlman's been getting a good run onto that back straight and into the Mazda, but it looks like Ewers is right there this time. As he pushes Harlman through the chicane into the Monza. will Ewers look to the inside here as they enter the hairpin? No, Harlman with a great run out of the Mazda, opens up about a cart length gap to Ewers. He's going to hold him off. Ewers looks to the inside a little bit, not going to be able to make it happen as Harlman is running a little defensive here into this infield section. Gets through the right-hander good. Double lefts here back onto the straightaway, and let's see if Harlman can hold him off. Checkered flag! Tom Harlman wins Heat 1 and Masters. Jason Ewers second. Louis Muskoff in third with Michael Wells rounding out your top four in Briggs Supermasters here for Heat 1 at the Indy Karting Challenge. If you are here in the paddock with us today, remember uh, the races are live streamed via Cart Chaser Grassroots. We encourage everybody to go on YouTube and get your $10 a month Cart Chaser subscription. We understand that last year the racing was free. It's very important that we support companies that are helping grow the sport. And we really feel strongly about supporting Cart Chaser and what Xander Clements and his crew have been doing for the sport these last few years. The opportunity to watch live racing like you're seeing on your screen in front of you right now as we get the replays of the Supermaster start, a little bit of tire spray. Really cool to be able to watch that live on the internet and share with your family and friends. So be sure to send that link out, youtube.com slash cartchaser, and encourage everyone you know to support karting and support your kids racing today. What a good run for Harlman, bringing it home there for the win in Heat 1. IKC track staff getting everything ready to go as we enter heat number two. Our second heat of the day. is 
going to be our IAMI micro category. Presented by Global Mind. These young racers often display a immense amount of racecraft uh, as we watch them, you know, learn what it takes to be a young driver in a really competitive market like the one here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, we're really excited to watch what these guys can do as they enter their first heat race. Field coming to the green. Let's see how the starter feels about it as they funnel into the tram lanes. No, they're going to go around one more time. IKC track staff sends them around one more time. With the changing track conditions, it's important to note that the schedule is slightly behind. So anyone following along, they're worried about 35 minute delay right now. They are ready racing, so we do anticipate that we will catch back up on schedule by round two uh, this afternoon sessions with the split format here the Indy Karting Challenge seems to be giving young drivers and old drivers alike the opportunity to race multiple categories as the track staff there you see them giving the sign to slow down to these young drivers sometimes coming around to take the green flag the hardest part of getting micros to learn the racecraft they're going to get one more, one more from our starter. Young drivers, when they're, they put the helmet on and they get out on the racetrack, it, it, you know, that's very easy to get excited. Heart rate starts going really fast, and it's hard for them to remember sometimes that we really want slow starts in karting. Uh, if anything, the advantage goes to the driver with the slower start, as you can punch off and get that jump going into turn one, hopefully get a little bit of a gap going through that opening sector of the circuit. Micro drivers here going around one more time. Hopefully we get the green this time by. So we see one driver there in the back, maybe struggling with the mixed conditions a little bit to catch up to these front runners in micro. As we see all of the IKC staff there trying to get these guys to slow down a little bit. Keep it safe and bunched up into turn one. And a little bit of a spin there on the outlap. The cart in the back. Let's hope he can get going again. IKC staff will get over there and try to help him off the circuit. We'll see if we get green this time by with that cart stuck. One more time around again for Micro with that cart in the back getting spun. Uh, this is, you know, unfortunately... Uh, Sometimes this is what micro racing is like. We're trying to teach these young drivers how to manage their racing events, how to bunch up for starts, how to race cleanly, and sometimes you got to wave them off a few times to make sure they get it right. It's important here in the club programs that we're harboring young talent and teaching them the right way to do things. So we definitely want to show some patience with these young guys as we get them going for their first heat race of the day. As we see your top three now coming back towards the line off the old section of the circuit into the new section. And they're gonna Andy's gonna stop them there. They're gonna wait for that back cart to catch up and then they're gonna head over to take the green flag. <laughs> These guys slowed down, bunched up. Looks like everybody's in formation. Coming off of the old sector of the track into the tram lanes. Let's see if we can get green this time by. Green, green, green. We are underway for Micro Swift. Heat 1. 
good start there from our leader out into turn one, two, three sector. A little bit of mixed conditions. This is the first time he's hitting it fast as he hits that puddle. We'll see what he does. A little bit more wheel input to get through that corner, but not an issue here for cart number nine as he leads him out onto the back straight. About an eight cart gap right out of the gate. Through the chicane into the Monza. These guys are splitting apart pretty quick here. Mixed conditions seem to definitely showcase the drivers with a little bit more experience as we see cart number nine just a little bit more wheel input into the corners possibly a different setup really able to manage the mixed conditions on this circuit really well so we come off of the old sector of the track into the new track on the front straightaway completing lap one we have Howard and P1 McNeely comes around in P2 just about a four second deficit off that first lap uh, really just a little bit of a gap there opened up quick again with the mixed conditions it seems like Howard just maybe nailed the setup he's definitely running wet tires there it looks like on the live stream and able to just pull off a little bit more of an aggressive outlap creating a big gap quickly to McNeely in second and then Simone Ellick in third as we round out your top three I am not picking up and timing that final driver here on the track so maybe he's having a bit of a transponder issue I'm sure the IKC staff will get that sorted out right away. But here we have Howard making a big statement in these first two laps, getting a big gap out front. It was three, three and a half seconds on lap one. Let's see what the gap is as we come back onto the main straightaway for lap two. Hudson Howard, 55.19, lapping 2.6 seconds quicker than P2. We've actually got already a 5.5 second gap back to P2 of McNeely as Hudson Howard really just taken off these first three laps showing a little bit more experience in these mixed conditions, a little bit more car control as we see the difference in pace here from Howard to McNeely. Both drivers doing great, staying together on their formation laps, get a good green flag, getting out safely in these mixed conditions. Again, the micro categories are primarily just a development category for drivers to learn get comfortable in the cart get comfortable with the functions of some of the racing uh, aspects and then get into the mini category and maybe start traveling doing a little bit of racing at a bigger level once they get this experience here at club programs like the IKC program here at Whiteland Raceway Park very critical for young drivers to learn and get their development in the right environment with the right teachers and hopefully the staff here at IKC will be just that for these guys. As we're just watching Hudson Howard put on an absolute clinic in car control. Those Supermasters drivers, we are going to see the track improving as the day goes, but the Supermasters drivers were certainly struggling a little bit more than Hudson Howard to find grip, as Hudson maybe has a little bit more of an aggressive wet line setup, a little bit wider track width in the front, a little bit narrower in the rear, Generally, it's hard for these small drivers to really make the weight jack and get the body transfer into the car, lift that rear end inside up, and make grip in these wet conditions. But Hudson Howard is proving that theory wrong as he is checking out big time over P2 of McNeely. That time by, Hudson Howard goes purple again. 54.992. Again, this track just getting faster as the day goes. We're going to see the track drying up, and it's going to be just as much about the driver's ability to navigate the changing track conditions as it is the mechanic's ability to give them a good race car. It's really hard in these conditions to find the right setup, to find the right balance as the track is drying, and sometimes you've just got to hope you made the right call when you send your young drivers out there on the circuit to see what's going on. Howard up to a 9.8 second gap last time by over P2 of McNeely. I bet we'll see that gap open up here. McNeely with a big gap here to Simona Simonellic as we see these top three making laps, learning the track. Two to go from your starter. Two to go this time by for Hudson Howard. As he goes purple again, 54.6 on lap four. Really impressive drive from Hudson Howard, learning the circuit, learning the changing additions here. As he is just clicking off laps here, making the gap bigger, getting himself some comfort. Hopefully bring home a, a win here in Heat 1, get some solid points on the day. A 
it said Howard clicking laps off. It looks like we had a driver off back there. Not sure who that was off the circuit. Already getting assisted by the IKC staff here. White flag is out here for Hudson Howard as he comes through. Back onto the new part of the straightaway here. New sector of the track here at Whiteland Raceway Park. And he is absolutely on a move. Hudson, the young son of IndyCar driver Jay Howard, the Jay Howard Driver Development Program, shaping young racers all the way through Formula Car Racing. So really awesome to see Hudson here taking on Dad's legacy and, and really making a move out here in the wet. Must be those, uh, those English jeans, English drivers known for their pace in the wet conditions here. And we are seeing that out of Hudson Howard this morning as he completes his last lap in Heat 1 with a dominant lead over P2 of McNeely. Patrick McNeely, big, big, big advantage over Simonellic in P3. He will likely come home P2 as we see Hudson Howard round out that last corner onto the straightaway and checkered flag for Hudson Howard, your winner in Heat 1. Hudson Howard, absolute masterclass in the changing conditions. Willing to put more wheel input in to make the cart do what he wanted it to do. Obviously a brilliant setup from his engineer and coach Jay back in the paddock. And Hudson has shown what we do when the track conditions are changing. Absolute confidence, willing to push hard in the cart to make the cart work. And it showed in that massive 20 second gap back to P2. Here we're getting an instant replay of the start. Hudson with a good run, able to push in there confidently on the inside and get up to some grip offline going through P1. Took us a few laps to get going as we see a driver spin there on the parade lap. Uh, again, these young drivers, the goal here is just to teach them to get all these learning opportunities out of the way. And thanks to all the staff and everyone for helping these guys get going as they are learning the ropes. Some of these guys, the first couple events they've had in their karting careers at just seven to 10 years old. So really exciting to see these guys learning, getting faster. And we look forward to watching them grow as drivers here on Kart Chaser live throughout this entire season of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. As we see these young drivers getting ready to take to the circuit for the Mini Swift heat race here for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge. Mini Swift presented by Alari. Thanks to our class partners here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Really important part of making karting happen, making a good club racing program for these drivers. A big field here in the Mini category as we are set to kick off heat one here in these changing track conditions. Again, we've seen it in these first two heat races. The changing track conditions from wet to dry throughout the day are really going to play a huge factor in the success of these drivers as we are navigating not only the changing conditions on the circuit, but also the changing and setup for these mechanics as they're trying to give their race car drivers the best chance they have at performance in these early heats. It's really hard sometimes to navigate these conditions and guess as a mechanic. 
on what the circuit's going to be doing minute to minute as the conditions are changing. So really exciting to see the disparity here between these drivers and the talent level in the drivers to overcome these conditions. Driving a little bit more aggressively as we see the heats go on, more wheel input as we see a driver make his way back up, a little bit of an off there in the outlap. And they are going to come around off the old sector of the track looking for a green flag from our starters first time by as the IKC staff showing them their slowdown. We want good slow starts here at the IKC. Important for safety, important for young drivers to learn how to start these events slow. And these guys in the MPG front row are no stranger to that. They seem to know exactly what they're doing here. Nice slow roll as we are coming off the old sector of the track and onto the front straightaway into the tram lanes looking for a green. They'll get it. Green flag. We are underway for Mini Swift Heat 1 as the racers take to bashing through turn one. A little bit of a rough start there in that opening few corners for the front two rows. A little bit of side to side contact. No harm, no foul as they funnel into line there and get going out through that opening sector and onto the back straightaway there. Single file, part 257 it looks like, out front to the point, through the chicane into the Monza. Good little gap there from that first gap to the front group. Uh, not sure what happened to that second group of carts. Maybe a little bit of an issue there in the opening few corners as we're seeing yellows on the circuit right now. Again, these changing track conditions just so difficult for drivers to navigate especially when they go from a parade lap, formation lap, into race lap, it's really hard to, to estimate what that pace is going to be like, where you're going to find grip on or offline. But we're seeing these first two drivers really just check out on that opening lap, proving a little bit more experience here in these changing conditions, a little bit more experience in the wet. Two race factory MPG pilots making a show of it. Big inputs into the wheel, making that cart work. Seems the wettest part of the circuit there coming out of the infield in the new sector of the track and onto the back straightaway. A few puddles, but these drivers making quick work of it as we get going back out onto the back stretch. Yellow flags have been removed, so they are racing. We'll see here a little replay of that start as we see. Uh, oh, looks like that was the out. Big puddle splash there. For that driver on the formation lap so that's the reason there for the separation the driver catching up as we go back to this battle here between Dadis and O'Gara O'Gara to the inside he's through O'Gara to the point not quite Gaddis leaves it around the outside and Abel's to take the inside through the next hairpin to the right a little bit of a slide out there for Gaddis good side-by-side -side action and good for O'Gara able to ca capitalize on that mistake get back under Gaddis to the point so now we have O'Gara Gaddis and Taylor making up your top three and Mini Swift Heat 1. O'Gara, no stranger to the circuit here at Whiteland Raceway Park. His mother and father, Sarah Fisher O'Gara and Andy O'Gara, track owners. Danny should have plenty of laps here in mixed conditions to have a little bit more of a knowledge base as to what the track's going to do as we see him lead the field back around onto the straightaway. Working... The next lap, Danny goes purple that time by 52.914. No gap built to Gaddis, though, as Gaddis is looking to the inside of O'Gara. O'Gara searching for grip here, moving off the racing line a little bit in those slicker parts of the new circuit, trying to get off of the rubber. These tires, these empty tires, lay down a nice coat of rubber, great for dry compound racing, wet compound racing, not as much. As soon as that rubber layer gets wet, it's going to create an oily surface. Drivers will have much less grip. Danny O doing a great job moving off the line, finding the grip where he needs it. Seems to not be a problem here in the older sector of the track as he's able to get right down to the apex, a little bit of a late apex there. Good run out onto the front straightaway for O'Gara. Dominic Gaddis right there behind him, not creating much of a gap O'Gara to Gaddis as he comes through just four tenths of a second. Will Fechner, Fetchinger goes purple that time by it looks like. Will Fetchinger, hope, hopefully catching up to these top two. Going to make it a three-way battle here in heat race number one. Again, these mixed conditions, we're going to see setups play a factor into this. Some mechanics may choose to set the driver up. A little bit more of a dry setup with these changing conditions, hoping the track comes to them. And it looks like that may be the case here with Fetchinger as he goes purple with a 52-3. Lightning fast, three-tenths of a second over Danny O and uh, Gaddis that last time by. 
we may see him catch up, especially if O'Gara and Gaddis decide to battle out here early in the race. Danny O not struggling at all for grip in that inside sector of the track as we have a Race Factory MPG 123 here. Whiteland Raceway Park, home of Race Factory and my parents' garage under the guidance of Billy Vincent, Chase Jones, and Race Liberante. Uh, absolutely excellent team. Developing these young drivers as we see Will Fetchinger with a big miss there on the apex. Still able to find the grip off track as we have a slow driver there. Good job to the leaders for getting around that safely. Always hard to navigate lap traffic. Really something important for these young drivers to be learning how to do at the club level. So great job to that top three. Getting through that lap traffic safe. Not losing a bunch of time as Danny O looks over his shoulder back at Gaddis. Not able to make it happen into the hairpin. Gaddis is all over the back of Danny as it looks like Fetchinger has actually joined the lead pack from about a one-second deficit on that outlap. So Will Fetchinger really on a move here as white flag is in the air. Back onto the main straightaway for the last time this session as Danny O opens up a bit of a gap onto the straightaway. Fetchinger to the inside of Gaddis. He's through, but back to slide out, and Gaddis is back through the P2. They're going to battle it out and give Danny O'Gara a bit of a gap here. On this last lap, it looks like Danny O is given the security blanket he needs to just be able to run this last lap at his pace. Take it nice and easy. No reason to look behind him as Danny's trying to see where everyone else is at. Gaddis back to P2. Great, great throw in there for Fetchinger. Just not able to make it stick under those wet conditions as he pushes up a little wide. There's still nose to tail going back through the infield section here. Last chance for Fetchinger to make a move on Gaddis here as they go into the double rights. Will he do it? No, he's going to stay in line. Back onto the main straightaway for the last time. Danny O'Gara, your winner. Heat number one here at the IKC. Dominic Gaddis comes through P2. Will Fetchinger, P3. Those MPG boys have to be proud getting a 1-2-3 in the first heat like that. Austin Taylor and Titus Roberts round out your top five. Oh, no. Dylan Braun in the line gets... P5 from Titus Roberts. Congratulations to Dylan Braun. Titus Roberts drops back to P6 in that last corner. Bentley McCann, Kaysen Hendrickson, Andrew Avalos, and Rhett Johnson rounding out your top 10 for this mini swift category. These drivers cut through, waiting to get off the track. We will get a replay of some of this action from the event here shortly. Again, these young mini drivers really putting on a clinic in racecraft. We see this all throughout the sport that once drivers hit that mini category or the sportsman category in the 206s, they really tend to have such a good sense of cart control of racecraft. And we really see some of the best racing in these categories as these young drivers are learning how to race with each other, how to be clean, when to push, when to wait. We saw a little bit of that this session. As some drivers threw it in a little bit hot, weren't able to hold on to the bottom line. In the wet, it's especially important. Once you get under a cart to make a pass, you have to be able to fight down to that apex, prevent the crossover. As we see a little bit of a hectic start there from the back half, allowed those front four to really break out in the lap one. And we see a big pass there. Danny O not able to make it happen. That was great defense there. And we are seeing just absolutely excellent, ba excellent battling here in these mixed conditions, really, from these young drivers. All, uh, all friends off the track, enemies on in some sense with the, you know, these tough battles. All these young kids want to win. It's important to highlight how they're showing respect. They're racing each other incredibly clean, uh, you know, partially in thanks to their mechanics and tuners teaching them to race that way. Our excellent staff here at IKC. Uh, marshalling under the guidance of Joe Janowski with Matt Burpo as the race director. It's really important that we're seeing this good, clean racecraft out of these young drivers as they're learning the ropes, learning how to battle for position, and Danny O'Gara bringing home the Heat 1 victory here for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Great job to Danny O, and we will be right back with our next group of action here with 206 Heavy when we get back.
Are you ready to get behind the wheel? From Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar, all the pros start here. For more information, check us out online at mccarding.com or call us and go racing today. Just about ready to get back to the action here for heat number one for the 206 heavy category as we are seeing the track staff recovery vehicle drop a cart back off to the scale line and carts ready to take onto the track. Mixed conditions changing all day here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Big storms overnight left the track incredibly green and wet this morning for qualifying as we are seeing now the track begin to dry off and mixed drying conditions as well from the old part of the circuit to the new part of the circuit showing drivers really struggling for grip in that newer part of the track with some standing water as we see on the replay from last night big massive thunderstorms really washed all the rubber off this racing circuit leaving the conditions pretty pretty difficult for drivers to navigate this morning as 206 heavy is going to take to the track These drivers, we're seeing a real dry line start to form there on this racetrack. Drivers are going to have to rely on the changing setups. Hope they made the right calls on track with caster, uh, things of that sort that we changed for the wet conditions in hopes that they made those right decisions for the way the conditions are going to be mid-race. Hoping that they can pull a little bit of a gap on drivers who maybe missed the setup. It's hard in these conditions to know which way to go full wet full dry setup somewhere in the middle it is definitely dealer's choice at this point as the track is displaying mixed conditions from one part of the circuit to the next we've got the drivers lining up here hitting the formation cone gonna bunch up get ready to come on to the front straight away as we see our pulse hitter nice and slow Really important to see these veterans starting races slow as there is actually a major advantage to the pole sitters starting events this slow. Get a little bit quicker of a bump out off the group and a little bit better of a jump into turn one as they're looking for the green flag this time by. And they got it, green flag. We are underway for heat number one, 206 heavy. Tight battle there is cart 197 it looks like getting to the inside there. Not gonna make it happen over your pole sitter as they funnel into line. Cart number 86 to the point. That is Swanson. Just a slight advantage over McCorkendale and Tony and P3 as they go through the chicane into the Monza here for the first time in these conditions. Drivers first real opportunity to get a feel for the race circuit, where the grip's at and what level of grip they have. As we see the whole field making it through the Monza nice and smooth battling nose to tail through that inside sector of the track back onto the main straightaway as they'll come to complete lap one working lap two we'll get the ticker live on your screen in a moment as they complete lap one we're looking for a move to the inside from McCorkendale and he's not able to make it stick as he maybe shuffles out he's through McCorkendale to P1 over Swanson Swanson over Tony this top three is putting on one show in this first opening lap as McCorkendale seems to maybe have nailed the setup here. He's going to gap Swanson just four or five cart lengths in that first sector alone as they move on to the back stretch through the chicane and into the Monza for the second time. About a five cart length lead for McCorkendale. 
into the hairpin. McCorkendale clearly running a very wet setup as he makes a mistake. He's off the racetrack. Swanson back to the bumper of McCorkendale. Swanson going to look to the inside as they go into the double rights here. No, he's going to stay in line. McCorkendale clearly with a little bit more of an aggressive wet line setup. Maybe a little bit wider track width in the front, a little narrow in the rear, maybe a few teeth up on the rear gear as McCorkendale comes around to complete lap three and P1. He's going to gap again. Terrence Swanson just a few cart lengths down the straightaway, clearly running a different race gear, making the right call on these mixed conditions as we see Tony giving a little bit of a bumper there to Swanson as they're going to work their way onto the back straight. A good battle there for P2 as Tony makes the move to the inside and Deed says I'll go with him thank you one two three Adam Dietz following Tony on through Swanson and one lap oh looks like he may have held on to that last one but Swanson goes to P3 or P4 it looks like yeah Swanson back to P4 what a move there Adam Dietz following Tony on through as they come back onto the front straightaway here. Oh, problem for McCorkendale. He loses the lead to Adam Dietz. Adam Dietz, your new leader, going into turn one at the end of the straightaway. And we are seeing a great battle in these mixed conditions. A few errors from drivers really keeping them honest and keeping this group tight. McCorkendale, clearly the raw pace to be up front here. And just a few errors seem to be putting him back a little bit further in the pack as we see him trailing this lead group of Adam Dietz and Matt Geist. Really, Matt Geist and Adam Deist able to put together solid pace here as they're pulling away from McCorkendale a little bit. Tony and Swanson once up in that front pack back to P4 and P5, trailed by Kaylor Nicholson and Ron Swift, Kenneth Owens and P8, and Zach Claybaugh and P9. They are working their way around this circuit, really tight battling here up at the front end of the circuit. And Adam Dietz appears to have put about a two and a half cart gap over Geist appears to have put on a gap over Deist as we see McCorkendale with his hand in the air. I wonder if he's having some sort of an issue there. These 206 is really susceptible to water uh, issues, believe it or not. So when we saw that cart hit the puddle at the apex taking the cut through on that formation lap, I'm wondering if we didn't get a little bit of water inside the air filter uh, inside that engine, which will really cause a performance issue in these cars as we see McCorkendale really starting to fall back there with Kaylor Nicholson even catching him pretty quick as they go through the Monza and down that short shoot into the hairpin. Matt Geist with a big lead as they go through the infield sector here. Back on to the straightaway to complete this lap with a 1.6 second advantage over Adam Deeds. Two to go for Matt Geist as he works this lap. Matt Geist back onto the racing line, it seems, through that new sector as the track is drying up. Maybe a short-term loss, long-term gain. Not able to have the pace in those opening few laps, but as the track is coming to him, the cart seems to be hooked up just right for the mixed conditions as he is really starting to walk away from Adam Dietz in P2. Evan McCorkendale, P3 still, he's hanging on, although it does look like Kaylor Nicholson is starting to reel him in a little bit as Nicholson is under pressure from the back with Trey Tony. Geist went purple that last time by with a 52.99. That was three and a half tenths of a second quicker over Adam Dietz as he grits the white flag here. Smooth sailing for Matt Geist, nailing the setup here on this one with the mixed conditions for heat number one. As Nicholson makes the move over Swift to take over P4, McCorkendale and P3 still losing a bit of time, about one and a half seconds off the pace of Adam Deitz and P2, and two seconds overall off of Matt Geist and P1. The Geist brothers seemingly set up the carts in a similar fashion as they are matching pace pretty well here rolling out the final lap. Matt Geist completes the infield sector and finds his way back onto the main straightaway to take the victory. Matt Geist, P1 in Heavy Heat 1. Adam Deitz will come through to complete his P2 run. At Corkendale able to hold off the charging Swift in P3. 
Ronald Swift comes home P4. Kaylor Nicholson with a fast lap that time by in P5. Troy Tony lost a few spots there on the final few laps, as well as Terrence Swanson working 6th and 7th. Back to Kenneth Owens in P8 and Zach Claybaugh rounding out your top nine for 206 Heavy. Heat number one at Whiteland Raceway Park. As we see the drivers waiting here to restart their carts and get across the circuit safely back into the paddock. The final driver takes the checkered. As we see the replay here of the opening few corners. What a great wheel-to-wheel -wheel start here from McCorkendale and Swanson. Really fast out of the gate again. The setup's super difficult to nail in these changing additions as we saw a few drivers really shine here later in this part of the heat. McCorkendale and Swanson there battling through the new infield section. Turn 2-3 complex. A mistake for McCorkendale. Cost him the initial time. We're not wondering if that's where we brought some water into the motor. We saw McCorkendale fall off a little bit. Impressive two for one. This is the move that changed the race for Geist as he decided, I am going through with you. Stayed to the bumper and made the pass up into the top three. Was able to turn it into a victory. As the drivers get by McCorkendale, we didn't see the beginning of what happened there. McCorkendale puts his hand in the air, maybe not happy with that move. Uh, maybe a bobble out of that infield sector. And here we have the pass for the win. Geist with a nice commitment to getting onto that back straightaway fast and able to bring home a Heat 1 win, getting him premium starting real estate for the final in today's IKC event here at Whiteland Raceway Park. 206 heavy. Wow, what a good, good race that we had there. Our next group, 206 Masters. I'm sorry, our next group, K Jr. One of our biggest groups of the weekend with some top level talent here from the Indy Karting Challenge. Drivers, mix both club event drivers and drivers who have taken the step to go run some national racing or regional racing here in the K Junior category. So these drivers, no stranger to mixed conditions, no stranger to difficulty and adversity on the racetrack. And I expect we're gonna see some amazing racing here from this K Junior group. Miami KA Junior sponsored by MPG and Race Factory under the guidance of Billy Vincent, Chase Jones, and Race Liberante. As we see some MPG Race Factory carts up front here, getting ready for heat number one. Drivers coming through the Monza, they've hit the formation cone. They're gonna bunch up together, slow down, and get ready to take the green flag for the start of this heat race. Thirteen total drivers in the K Junior category this time around. 153 entries here for round two of the IKC at Whiteland Karting. Uh, so really excited to have such good fields. Just our second race into the year, uh, you know, with everything considered with the weather, uh, keeping some people away. Really good competition, and we're really excited to see where the IKC program is going to go as we work through this year and into the future. Drivers coming around nice and slow. Again, absolutely no stranger to this sort of thing as these K Junior drivers are some of the best in the world from Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, home of the Indy 500 and home of good racers here in Indianapolis, Indiana. K.A. Jr. class coming to the green. They'll get it. K.A. Jr. is green into turn one. Good jump there for our bull sitter getting out to the point quick. You can see so much driver input into the steering wheel as they're navigating these opening corners. Still wet conditions as we see a driver around in that second group. Driver around in turn number three as we see cart 320. A little bit too much curb there going on to the back straight. Creates a little bit of gap to P1, but we're seeing a breakout with these first three carts. A little bit of a gap, another bunch, and then a little bit of a bigger gap back to this trailing pack as we see the drivers navigate these changing conditions early on through that infield sector working lap number one. We'll see what order they come around here with MPG one, two, three. Uh, looks like one, MPG one and two. Mort, cart number 812 of Mort to P1. Landon Brewer, cart 820 in P2. As 
we are waiting for the ticker to appear on the screen and we'll get some of these cart names for you shortly looks like Moore is able to create a little bit of a gap here in these opening two laps back to Buer as they're going to close the gap there a little bit Buer better under braking gains a few cart lengths as they're working through this infield sector of the track really two racetracks put together here at Whiteland Raceway Park which creates a unique dynamic for drivers as they navigate the old school tight part of the circuit and into what we refer to as the national circuit here in turn one going down the straightaway. Ryan Mort, uh, fast that time. Landon Buer goes purple. That time by just four tenths off of Mort. So Landon Buer, cart coming in. Dane Van Dyck, uh, P3, cart number 79, just a few tenths back from P2 of Landon Buer. So we're going to see if this front three can't bunch back together and have some good racing here as they go through the Monza next on track in P4. A.J. Stoner followed by Tyler Johnson. Cammie Fisher and Charlie Myers here getting a little bit of a battle going there for P5 it looks like. As we get back up here to the lead, Buer making quick work of closing that gap to Ryan Mort. The season now to the rear bumper of Mort going down the front straightaway and into turn number one. Nobody goes faster that time. Seems like the cart came in really quick there for Buer. We'll see how that plays out in the long run with these longer heat sessions. A minute 25 left in this race. A little bit shortened sessions today due to the weather trying to catch back up. So that's going to come into play here and how these drivers and mechanics set up the carts. You see Buer's cart come in very quick. <coughs> back to the rear bumper of Ryan Mort. Dane Van Dyck a little bit off the pace here as he's dropping back to about a second gap to Buer, A.J. Stoner able to lead that second group of Tyler Johnson and Cammie Fisher as they come back around, completing this lap, 52 seconds to go, and Ryan Mort, still your leader into turn number one, MPG Race Factory 1-2 here in K Jr. Ryan Mort still out front as they go into the old sector of the track here. Tight corners, heavy on the brakes again for Landon Buer. Maybe a little bit quicker under braking than Ryan Mort. A little bit of an advantage as they come off of that infield sector back onto the circuit into the front straightaway. Just a two-car lead, seven seconds left. They will not get two to go this time by. So that's three laps to go for our leader, Ryan Mort, as they are working the new sector of the racetrack. A little bit of a rear wash there for Buer. He's going to lose a little bit of time getting through that sector and into the back straightaway. Dane back in P3 with a solid gap. A little bit of a comfortable margin there. Uh, back to P4 of A.J. Stoner all by himself there in no man's land. A.J. Stoner just clicking off laps, seeing if he can't learn the track, learn a little bit of setup advice to give to his mechanic when they get back to the garage to get him set up for the main event today. He'll be rolling off. Pretty good, and we're getting two to go for Ryan Moore and Landon Buer as we work two laps to go this time by. We can see a big difference in the driver input there of Ryan Moore from the start of this race to now. Much more minimal inputs, minimal driver steering angle as we're seeing him turn behind him, seeing where his buddy Landon Buer is. He's opening up a little bit of a gap, about half a second back to Buer, four or five car lengths he's going to make through the Monza for the second to last time and into the hairpin again Buer great under braking we're seeing that throughout this whole session uh, I'm, I'm sure these drivers are on a similar setup coming out of the race factory MPG tent so really what we're seeing here is coming down to drivers as we look a little bit further back in the pack uh, last lap for Ryan Moore and Landon Buer as they are spread out it looks like we're not going to get the exciting finish here in the heat race uh, that we love to see on these live streams but we are about to catch some lap traffic we'll see if lap traffic has a play in the outcome of this race always a hard part about club racing but something that's important for drivers to learn how to navigate getting through lap traffic safely keeping the racing going and minimizing time loss very important lesson for these young drivers as it is going to be close on whether they are able to catch lap traffic before the end of this event either way ryan moore pulling a decent gap there on landon buer as they come back out on the front straight away he doesn't even need to worry about it ryan moore 
comes through. Checkered flag for Ryan Moore, your winner in heat number one here over Landon Buer and Dane Van Dick, your top three. A.J. Stoner comes through P4, gaining himself a great starting position for the final today. Cami Fister and Christopher Utsi coming five and six. Tyler Johnson in seventh, Mason Galeon. Charlie Myers in ninth, Kennedy Tracy rounding out your top ten. Lucian Lacer, Evan Patton, and Connor Braun pulling up the tail of the field with issues early on in that race for Connor. That wraps up our KA Junior Heat Race number one. Congrats to Ryan Mort and Team MPG Race Factory on that win as the drivers pull around and wait to cross the circuit as we're going to get some replays here of this last session. KA Junior stiff competition again with the changing track conditions. We're seeing these groups split up quick at the start of the race as we see off pole with a good jump there into turn one. And then the battle was on from there. Nose to tail as they head onto that back straightaway. A little bit too much curb there for Buer. Maybe took that early opportunity away for him to make a move for the lead. As we see there, the issue for cart 737 back in the tail of the field that we caught there, lap traffic at the end. Just an issue on that first lap uh, caused him to get caught there. Luckily, did not affect the outcome of the race as we wrap up Heat 1 for K.A. Jr. We will be back momentarily for our biggest category of the morning shift, 206 Light, coming up in just a minute. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com. They got their inventory online and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com. Welcome back as we are preparing to get underway for 206 Light Heat 1 here at Round 2 of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. 206 Light going to present some stiff competition here in what is the largest 206 category of the morning program here at IKC. Changing weather conditions have had drivers on their on their toes all day as the track seems to be drying out mostly now so we're going to see these cars going back to a primarily dry setup a little bit more of a tight parity between carts i would say as the track continues to dry and the drivers are not presented with any uh, extra adversity as we saw this morning with the wet conditions for qualifying as we see the radar pulled up here it looks like we are in the clear for the remainder of the day. This is going to be a dry race. A little bit of spotty showers popping up there. Not sure if that's going to get to us, but 
either way, we are ready for some exciting action here at the race circuit at Whiteland Raceway Park and excited to be working through round two of the new Indy Karting Challenge. So we see drivers being released from the grid. Eli Fox out front in the new Gen 206, ready to go here. We see some Amex entries, some top cart entries, a few MGMs, really good mixed field here in the 206 light category. These drivers, again, should be no issue with navigating their parade formation lap. As we see the staff send them over, again, a driver hits that puddle at the apex to the old turn one. We've seen drivers do that almost every session. Did not seem to cause an issue that time by, though, so that's a good start for these guys. As we get this big group ready to take to the green, they're going to get their way through the Monza. Check up, pull sitter Eli Fox going to lead the field around through the old sector of the circuit and onto the front straightaway where we will enter the tram lanes and hope for green flag racing this time by. Nice and slow starts in these 206 really put the performance highlight on the clutches that these drivers are choosing to use. A few options available for the Briggs 206 category. Baldwin bringing up the outside of row number one in P2. Wilbur inside row two with outside row two, Justin Iano and Heber row three outside Williams. Garrett row four and Stancombe rounding out your top eight as they are coming to the green flag quite slow, hoping to take the green this time by new gen driver Eli Fox just off to the inside gets a little love tap from the driver and they are green this time by green 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 we are underway for 206 light heat one eli fox with the early jump out to the lead and that gold and white new gen piloted cart as they make their way through the new sector of the infield and out onto the back straight eli fox with a great jump there through the inline sector as we get these guys funneling single file down the back straight Big run for P2 out of the back straight into the chicane and up into the Monza, closing that gap immediately to Eli Fox. These 206s is presenting some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel action as we see a driver get shuffled wide there. Not sure who that was. Lost four to five positions. Just not able to get down to the apex in that braking zone going to the hairpin that first time by. While these drivers out front, smart, knowing they want to break out, they want to make this a two-driver race, we're going to stay in line and race towards the end of this session. Eli Fox again coming around, finishing lap one in P1 with Heber ju or Wilbur just behind him in P2. Almost identical lap times that time as we see them nose to tail working lap number two. Heber rounding out your top three. Not much of a gap back to Justin Iano as we see Wilbur pushing Fox down that back straightaway into the Monza. Nothing separating them as we watch as this is set to be quite a good battle. A little bit of action further back in the pack as we see Johnson make a move going into the chicane and into the Monza there. Tight racing as we see Wilbur go for a move on Eli Fox and he's through. Fox to second. Wilbur to the point as we're working lap number two, completing two and starting lap number three. Wilbur able to make the move on Eli Fox as they work down, not losing any time back to Braden Heber. Gage, Justin Iano, P4, Peebles, P5. Dylan Howard in P6, Kyle Land in P7, Braden Johnson works his way up to 8th on track, Gavin Baird and Jared Howerton rounding out your top 10 as we work lap number 3. Levi Wilbur, a little bit of a gap going onto that back straight, but reeled right back in with the draft from Eli Fox as they work their way on that short shoot into the hairpin. Heavy braking in these 206 carts as they work their way into the old sector of the infield. Tight racetracks, perfect for 206s, lots of bottom end power. Makes for some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing as it looks like Braden Heber has caught the lead pack of Wilbur and Elijah Fox making this a three-way battle. We'll see how they do as they come back onto the straightaway working a minute and 30 seconds here in these timed races at Whiteland Raceway Park for the IKC. A function of time noted from the Whiteland uh, management here for this year. Heating events are time plus two laps. So when you see the drivers given two laps to go, that means the session clock has ran out at which point they will receive the two to go signal from our starter racing to the checkered flag. It's an interesting uh, change from lap 
laps in these heats. And going by time gives the drivers a unique perspective as we see Eli Fox with a slide job inside of Wilbur taking the lead back over going into the hairpin. As now Braden Heber looks to put a move on Wilbur as they go into the tight sector of the track. Eli Fox just about a one race car lead as they head back onto the front straightaway. Nose to tail, three car breakaway. As we have Fox P1, Wilbur P2, Heber coming up in P3. We're showing wrong on timing and scoring there when they cross the line so tight. Uh, we'll get that corrected here for this next time. Bias Fox is out in the lead. Good battle for this top three as they work their way onto the back straightaway. And hopefully we see some more wheel-to-wheel -wheel action as they get into the tighter sector of the track. Again, through the Mazda, nose to tail. Will anyone go to the inside here in the hairpin? No, they stay in line. They don't want to lose too much time knowing that Gage Justiniano is just 1.9 seconds back. Seems like a big gap, but once that lead pack starts battling, we can close that gap up incredibly quick. So these front three drivers, very smart, and we're seeing two to go this time by from our head starter, Eli Fox. A little bit defensive, narrow line down into turn number one, seeing if he can't keep Levi Wilbur behind him as they work the infield in this new sector of the national track. Eli Fox, little narrow entry, keeping the carts behind him in line as Braden Heber has to be waiting for his opportunity to move on Wilbur to get into striking distance of Eli Fox on the second to last lap. Eli Fox through the Monza. Does anyone look to the inside here? They're going to stay in line again. Surprising to not see Heber go for that move there and get within striking distance of Fox. And he loses a little bit of time. Maybe Heber knows they're going to battle in this tight stuff. He's trying to set himself up to be a little bit wider as they go and take advantage of them getting together. White flag for Eli Fox as we see Eli and Wilbur touch tires just a little bit. Gives Heber the opportunity to get inside. Heber to P2. Braden Heber able to make a move on Levi Wilbur now within striking distance of Elisha Fox. We will see if they're able to get it done here on the last lap. Eli Fox with about a two race car lead as they head on to the back straightaway. Eli Fox under attack from Heber as they go here into this final hairpin. We'll see if anyone makes the move. No, they stay in line. Eli Fox still with the point as they enter the tight infield sector. Will he run defensive? A little bit of a bump there from Heber as they get wide two by two. Heber up to the inside as they come getting onto the straightaway. A little bit too much curb for Heber. And looks like Levi Wilbur able to bring home the Heat 1 lead after some side-to-side -side action there from Eli Fox and Heber. Eli not happy with that move from Heber up over the curb. <coughs> As we see the checkered flag fly and we get the rest of this field underway. Levi Wilbur, your winner in Heat number 1 and 206 light. Eli Fox comes across the line in P2 after that side-by-side -side move from Braden Heber. Braden Johnson works his way up all the way to P4. Kyle Lane in P5. Gage Justiniano, P6. As these drivers are going to cut across the track. And we're going to get a, a look back at some of this action from heat number one and 206 light. Big puddle splash at the apex at turn one on the old circuit there that they take to cut through for the formation. Getting those tires wet seems to maybe pose an issue. There's a big slide move for the lead there on Eli Fox as we see these drivers battle it out wheel to wheel. Eli Fox back to the inside, way too heavy on the brakes, big slide, able to still fight the cart back down to the apex enough to keep the driver behind him as they work their way into the tight infield. Really good battles out of these top three, lots of respect, a little bit of side to side contact, but I don't think anything the race director is going to be too upset about. Uh, maybe a little talk from the drivers there about that one, a little bit too much curb allowing the driver from P3 to work his way around and take over the victory here in 206 light for Heat 1. Wilbur able to get it done from behind as he lost a few spots and was able to make up for it there. Looks like a little bit of a late late passing situation there too for Johnson able to work his way up to P4 on that last lap. Really overall great racing here in this 206 light category. Awesome to see as we're done with our rotation for the first round of heats. We're going to take a short intermission here, check in with our sponsors, and we will be back for the finals, starting with 206 Supermasters here when we come back.
Brandon, why are there all these charges for just over $200 from Acceleration Car Racing's website? That's because AKR gives you free shipping on orders of $200 or more within the continental US. Okay, but I thought you were just getting a pair of gloves. That's what, 70 bucks? But if I'm getting a new pair of gloves, I might as well get a new pair of shoes to match. And then on top of that, I'll get a neck brace because with the shipping, it's basically free. Yeah, I do not think the math checks out on that. Everything you need, all in one place and shipped to your door for free for orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Spend responsibly. Shop AKR.com. We are back underway racing for the finals. It looks like we received the green flag here for 206 Supermasters. Drivers breaking away through the infield sector of the track. Single file, a little bit of side-by-side -side action back there for P3. Not sure what driver that is as we'll get the timing the first time they come across the loop here. Supermasters underway. Looks like a big jump out front there for Harleman. As they go into the Monza for the first time, down the short shoot, into the hairpin, a little bit deeper on the brakes for Ewers there. As it looks like Harlman creating a little bit of a gap there back to Ewers as they work the infield of the old circuit back onto the main straightaway, working lap number one completed, and now we're working lap number two. Harlman, P1 with a 49.9 that first time by, just a few tenths of a second back to Ewers. Jason Ewers really able to make some moves in that first heat race, get a good starting position for this final. Muskoff in P3 right now, Wells back in P4, Wilbur P5, and Dan Monsian rounding out your top six. We're watching Harleman make a little bit of a gap for himself down that back straightaway into the Monza Bank, and the P3, P4, P5 group there of Muskoff, Wells, and Wilbur. A little bit of battling gonna open that gap up to Harleman and Ewers making it a two race, two way race here for the final. Unless Ewers catches Harleman, they start to battle. I think they're gonna be able to walk away a little bit here from that second group. Harleman, purple that time by with a 51.7. Three tenths of a second over Ewers that lap alone. So Harleman putting a little bit of a gap between himself and Jason Ewers as they work lap number three here in this 206 Supermasters pre-final. 206 Supermasters brought to you by Carbon Tech, one of our classes 50 plus years of age in the Briggs 206 category. These drivers still want to race wheel to wheel, still have a home to do so here in the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Excellent battling going on here in the 206 Supermasters category as this battle for P3 is heating up between Muskoff, Wells, and Wilbur. The battle on track right now for P3, a little bit of a bobble there for Muskoff, Wilbur right to the bet, Wells and Wilbur right to the rear bumper of it. Muskoff a little bit defensive coming onto the straightaway, like he knows they're there. Looks like Wells to the inside, we'll see if he can get it done. Book it, Wells to the inside, P3 for Michael Wells as they work that infield sector of the new track. A little bit wide there for Travis Wilbur as he's looking for a way around Muskoff. A little bit wide again. Wells out into the, uh, is that Wells or Wilbur out into the marbles there a little bit. Lost a little bit of time, P3 right now. We will see when they come back through and catch them on the Alpha Race Hub timing. Alpha Race Hub, the official timing app of the Whiteland 
Raceway Park Indy Karting Challenge Alpha a great solution for tracks looking to upgrade their timing and registration programs. As we see here, Tom Harlman making a statement, putting a gap on Jason Ewers. Ewers, who went purple last time by, the only driver so far to break into the 50-second laps, 50.89. Still, big gap to P1 of Harlman as they work their way through the drying sector of that track out onto the back straightaway. Harlman with a nice lead there as they go through the chicane and into the Monza. Three minutes and 11 seconds left in this final three minutes plus two laps. That is uh, functions of time rather than laps for scoring purposes. And really an interesting function for a race series to operate on time. Drivers able to see still the notification from the starter when they reach two laps to go. Good battle there at the back of the pack. Looks like that was Dan Monsian with a slide job move trying to get under in the hairpin and not quite able to make it done as Ewers closing that gap a little bit to Hardleman that time by. Right now, Ewers, lap three was his, his fastest lap, but that gap is only seven tenths of a second. Seven tenths of a second may seem like a lot in time, may seem like a lot in the gap on track right now. That's really only one or two bobbles out of Hardleman, and Ewers could be in this one again. So Hardleman really just trying to click off consistent laps as the track is changing, track's drying up, a little bit easier for the drivers to navigate consistently now. And Ewers maybe just nailed the late race setup here. A little bit of a different game plan uh, strategy for these longer sessions as the cart will come in a little bit later in the session. If you're looking for longevity, not necessarily coming in right away. And Ewers definitely starting to close that gap up. Right now, uh, lapping about two and a half tenths faster than Harlman. So Ewers able to catch up just a little bit closing within about four or five car lengths as they work the infield in the new sector of the track. Harlman seemingly developing a little bit of a hop there. A little bit of a tight hop for Harlman. That's going to slow him down as this track is drying off. Maybe missed on the setup just a little too narrow there in the rear end, a little bit too much caster. And I think that's the difference between Harlman and Ewers' pace right now. Harlman fighting a little bit of a tight bind. Ewers looking a little bit more free in that Burrell ART uh, four-stroke chassis, specifically made by Burrell in Italy. We will see if that cart can work well enough to get him to the rear bumper of Tom Harlman as they work one minute to go here in the 206 Supermasters final at IKC for round two at Whiteland Raceway Park. Ewers only three and a half tenths that time by. Closes it into two cart lengths under braking to Tom Harlman. We're going to have a two-way battle here. A little bit wide for Ewers out of that infield sector doesn't seem to cost them too much time there's a bobble from viewers though a little bit too much curve going out of the back straightaway and he's going to lose about four cart lengths to harm in there just one mistake so easy to see how much time you can make up or lose the small error in this 206 platform really emphasizes consistent smooth driving and can't recover as well from from bobbles like that out of viewers he's got to put the wheel down and make no mistakes if he plans on catching Harlman as we see a good move into the hairpin a little bit further back in the pack. I believe that's Wilbur taking over position P4 for Muskoff. A little bit of a battle there for P4. P3 is checking out just a tiny bit as we take the cameras back up to the battle for the lead. Four seconds to go, so three laps to go for Tom Harlman as Ewers is closing that gap back up, back down to about three car lengths as we're working three laps to go here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Good run out of Harlman out of that back straightaway, keeping Ewers at bay. We'll see if Ewers can pick off those four and a half tenths as they work three laps to go here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Harlman with a good run through the Monza. Ewers, again, the go-kart looks a little bit freer. It's faster in these tighter sections, faster under braking. We'll see if he's got anything for Harlman as we wrap up three to go. It's going to be two to go this time. Bye to your leader two to go and Ewers is there we must have missed a mistake out of Harlman Ewers is to the back bumper of Harlman he's going to look to the inside here let's get it done with two to go big move Ewers to the lead two laps to go Ewers takes the lead in the Supermasters pre-final here Harlman looking around the outside can he make it stick he's to the inside no Ewers able to stay on the point Harlman has to settle for P2 he's right there though this race is anything but over Harlman a little bit overstuck in the go-kart. Ewers just a bit freer, and Ewers is able to open up about a one-and-a-half car length gap as they go down that back straightaway and into 
the infield of the old track for the penultimate lap. Tom Harlman right back up to the bumper of Jason Ewers as they work this tight infield sector. Harlman's car seems to be great in this infield sector. A little bit of a tight hop in the new part of the track as Jason Ewers working a one and a half race car lead into the final sector of the track here. Last lap, Jason Ewers to the point, Harlman in P2, just about a three car length gap. Is Harlman a little bit wider line through that new part of the track? A little bit of a better, too much curve for Harlman. That's gonna cost them. As they work their way onto the back straightaway, about a two car gap still to Ewers, and Ewers works through the chicane into that famous Monza banking corner here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Two car length gap, too far back for Harlman to throw it inside of him going to the hairpin. We'll see if Harlman has anything for his last opportunity here going into the double rights in the infield. Will he look under Ewers? No, Ewers enters a little narrow, a little bit defensive as they work their way through the double rights, back out to the left, onto the straightaway. Last lap, Jason Ewers, your 206 Supermaster race winner here for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Tom Harlman, hard fought second place, great battle there out of him in this final event. Michael Wells rounds out your top three. Travis Wilbur, Lewis Muskoff, Tom Stevens, Dan Monson round out your top seven with Scott Monsian and Joseph Stevens rounding out your top nine. Excellent battle there out of Jason Ewers and Tom Harlman for the win of that race. Great racing. I'm sure these guys love to see that kind of action on the track and really showing why they've earned the title of Supermasters. Let's take a look back at this replay. Big start there for Harlman getting a big jump as Ewers gets a little bit of a side pod there from Row number two, giving him just enough of a push to get up into second place, go single file. Here we see a big move a little bit further back in the pack. Slide job, able to make it stick super clean into turn one. Seems like the new sector of the track here, really hard to make a pass work. Drivers are able to defend on the outside with the width of the circuit and really make it difficult for drivers to make the pass stick. So great to see some drivers making some good positions and here we have another pass into the hairpin my personal favorite passing zone on the track able to just move over wait for the driver in front of you to get into the brake pedal and just go a little bit deeper a little bit braver on the brakes as we see an amazing defense effort from Harlman not quite able to make it as you were as close as the door there for P1 Harlman with that bobble there on the curb that's where we saw him lose his chance on the last lap and Ewers able to bring that white and red Borelli RT machine to a victory here for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. We are on track already for our next group, Miami Micro Swift, presented by Global Mind. Here are these young drivers, seven to 10 years of age, just starting to get their first opportunities to take to a proper racing circuit here in the Micro Swift category really important that we see these drivers learning to develop not only their racecraft but functions of, of driving in a proper racing event like this hitting their formation laps slowing up grouping together for a good clean slow start and that's exactly what we're working with these young drivers on accomplishing today as we see these drivers work their way around you're gonna see the track officials here show them to slow down a little bit more as they're coming onto that front straightaway and they're gonna go two by two and funnel into the tram lanes looking for a green flag from the starter this time by last session it took us about three tries to get a green and this session already much more put together as they go side by side funneling into those tram lanes on the front straightaway will we get a green flag this time by we're green flag racing Howard to the point P1 a nice jump off the line for Howard working his way into that infield sector tons of confidence on the power early as he's able to create a three to four cart length gap in the first three to four corners as he's working through that new sector of the circuit back onto the back straightaway. Howard with a significant gap already as they work through the chicane into the Monza for the first time here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Howard, a little bit of a bobble there in the infield sector. It looks like P2 able to get back to the rear bumper of him. Again, this morning for heat races, these drivers were 
fighting incredibly mixed conditions as it looks like Hodges is right there to the rear bumper of Howard this time. Matching pace a little bit better. Howard really showing some promise in the wet conditions earlier this morning with just absolute raw pace over the rest of the field. Not able to make the same gap early on over Hodges in this final race. So we'll see if Hodges added anything for Howard as the cars start to come in on this race circuit and we start to see the drivers come to their own. Their first tri laps of the day for Micro Swift category here at Whiteland Raceway Park. And it looks like we're getting a two car breakaway from Howard and Hodges. We see track owner Andy O'Gara there looking on as he's watching the young drivers take to the circuit. Really a passion for helping young drivers develop out of Andy and Sarah, the circuit owners here at Whiteland Raceway Park. A uh, huge effort they've made to bring this place to life and create a home for young drivers to harbor talent in Indianapolis and the greater Indianapolis area. As we see Howard still able to hold the point, but Reagan Hodges right to the rear bumper as they go through that new sector of the track and onto the back straightaway. A little bit of a better run for Hudson as he makes his way through the chicane and into that Monza with tons of confidence. A little bit wider entry, a little bit better exit over Reagan Hodges. Hudson on the brakes through that tight hairpin, back into the old sector of the track. Drivers getting a really unique perspective running a tight sector of a road course and the new wide national feeling sector here at Whiteland Raceway Park creates a unique dynamic for drivers to have to navigate as Hudson works. Four minutes and 30 seconds left to the point as they complete that lap here in the microfinal. Howard with a little bit of a bobble there in turn number one. Reagan Hodges really able to suck up to his rear bumper as they work through this infield section and onto the back straightaway. Hodges doing a great job entering the corner narrow and still maintaining that good run at the corner exit. Something that really young drivers will learn to develop as the track starts to build rubber. And really, once they start traveling to bigger events, laying down more rubber on the track, it's going to be critical skills to have as we see Hudson a little bit wide through that hairpin and able to still pull a couple of cart lengths off Reagan Hodges, who may be even a little bit wider to that hairpin. Hardest thing for these young drivers to learn is the braking pressure. Uh, believe it or not, even these small micro carts take such force on the brake pedals to slow them down at the rate that they want to slow down at. So really, these young drivers learning threshold braking, learning straight line braking, trying to slow the carts down as quick as they can for those infield sectors of the track while trying to learn how to maintain pace and center off roll speed in these fast turns like we're seeing Hudson Howard do right now. Picking up a four-tenth lead over Reagan Hodges. Great, absolutely consistent driving for Hudson. Minimal wheel inputs, looking excellent on the track out there today. With William Richard rounding out your top three, Patrick McNeely P4, and Liat Simonellic rounding out your top five in this microfinal here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Howard back to the point as they round out this lap back onto the main straightaway working two minutes and 50 seconds. My math is correct. That will be about five laps plus two to go in these long final races here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Drivers navigating not only the changing conditions from wet to dry today, but also as these races get longer, the, the carts and the chassis are actually gonna change during the race itself. So drivers are gonna have to understand to push and when to slow down and give the tires a little bit of a breathing room in these longer sessions. Not so much of an issue with these young drivers. Small, not a lot of body weight, not putting a ton of heat in these tires. As we see Regan Hodges really reel back in Hudson Howard going to that infield section. Again, maybe just a little bit harder on the brakes as these young drivers are learning that thresholding braking technique. And back onto the main straightaway. A great one-two battle here for Hudson Howard and Regan Hodges as they work two minutes, two minutes left in this main event here in the Microsoft category. Hudson Howard using all of the racing circuit there as he moves his way onto that back straightaway. Great run out of that part of the circuit into the high speed chicane and into the famous Monza here at Whiteland Raceway Park. The corner of the track is known for Super steep banking allows the drivers to have an entry speed and mid-corner speed far exceeding that of a flat corner. Uh, really a cool experience for these young drivers to get to drive a corner like that as the sport has kind of done away with them in a hole due to the cost of maintaining them and the difficulties around bank corners. 
really cool to see Whiteland keep such an iconic landmark part of the circuit as these drivers are now working. Hudson Howard absolutely consistent. Reagan Hodges going move for move. Reagan Hodges able to stay right to the rear bumper of Hudson Howard. Hasn't put any moves in for position yet, but really able to stay consistent, stay right to the rear bumper of Hudson as we're working 56 seconds to go. I have a feeling next time we get to the green flag, it will be three laps to go next time by as Hudson Howard enters a little bit narrow there into that infield sector. And we see Reagan Hodges maybe starting to put on a little bit of pressure here as Hudson is working four laps to go, coming to three to go here as they enter the new part of the race circuit. We will see that ticker on your screen here change three laps to go for Hudson Howard as they are working 15 seconds left in this final event here for the Micro Swift category at round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Hudson Howard with a great display so far in consistency, not making any mistakes. We've seen Reagan Hodges maybe even a little bit more raw pace than Hudson in laps uh, make a mistake get back to the point make a mistake back to the point Reagan Hodges with the fast lap of the race at a 48.7 really really good raw pace maybe just a few more mistakes which is something these young micro drivers are learning here at this club series we see Hudson Howard a few less mistakes able to maintain the point two laps to go this time by for Hudson Howard working two laps to go in that all-white racing machine Hudson Howard son of former IndyCar driver Jay Howard and current team owner in what is uh, the road to Indy with a few open wheel series and programs under their belt really helping shape the futures of young drivers looking to make it to professional motorsports under the guidance of Jay uh, no better no better person to guide your journey than someone who's been there and someone who knows the ins and outs and we're seeing that right now with his young son Hudson as he's really putting on a clinic and consistency and just driving a race so hard for these young drivers to get out front and be able to maintain pace stay consistent without a rabbit to chase uh, so to speak so really cool to see Hudson out here in the lead as they take the white flag Reagan Hodges back to the rear bumper of Hudson we're gonna see if they can make a move here for the point as Reagan Hodges looking to the inside not able to make it happen there in the new sector of the track a little bit of a narrower exit there for, uh, for Hudson able to set up get a killer run onto that back straightaway for the last time going through the chicane and into the Monson Monza Hudson with a five car length gap back to Reagan I think that's gonna be it unless we see any mistakes out of Hudson Hudson hasn't put a wheel wrong this whole race good through the last hairpin good on the brakes for Hudson a little bit quicker there from Reagan closing up one or two of those car lengths back to the rear bumper of Hudson not gonna be able to make a move here as they come onto the straightaway Hudson Howard from point to point. Hudson Howard wins the micro final here for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Reagan Hodges, P2. William Richard able to round out your top three for a podium. Huge gap back to William Richard, 20 seconds away from that lead group in this micro final. Patrick McNeely, P4, and Liette Simonellic rounding out your top five here in the Microsoft category presented by Global Mind. Great, great display of consistency from young driver Hudson Howard as he's able to go point to point, not putting a wheel wrong. Minimal wheel inputs, really great composure to lead a race like that at such a young age. Uh, really great display of racecraft out of all these drivers to start off the main events for today. Connelly, we're going to get some replays change. here. Maybe bracket. not. We're going to go straight to commercial break. Commercial Sorry, guys. We're cut like close tomorrow. for time. Mm -hmm. Dude, are you even listening? Like, we need this to run this weekend. Want anything else? What do you mean? I already got it in the car on Acceleration Kart Racing's online store, bro. All orders over $200 get free shipping. Oh, um, throwing a set of tires. Done. Everything you need, all in one place, and shipped to your door for free on orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Shop AKR.com. We're at a commercial break.
We are back at Whiteland Raceway Park for round two of the Indy Karting Challenge. Ready to get underway with our next category on track. Mini Swift, presented by Alari. Mini Swift, 8 to 12 years old, running that IAMI Swift platform. Really popular across the, across the uh, Midwest here and really across the country as the two-stroke platform of choice for drivers young and moving up into the senior ranks. The Swift platform, 60 cc's, air-cooled two-stroke, really creating a lot of performance for these young drivers to handle at such a young age, 8 to 12 years old for many. And we're seeing a big group here take onto the circuit as the track is drying. Maybe we see some drivers who sat out this morning now entering the circuit as we come around, lining up, hopefully, to get the green this time by. Your pole setter, Danny O'Gara, really put on a clinic that last heat with a great battle over P2 of Gaddy. We are going to work our way through this lineup. Fletchinger in P3, Austin Taylor in P4, Braun in P5, Roberts P6, rounding out that third row, McCann P7, Hendrickson P8, Johnson P9, Sears, rounding out your top 10 with Avalos and Willie rounding out 11th and 12th in this stacked mini swift field coming back onto the straightaway here first go at a green flag we'll see these drivers check up slowly led by Danny O'Gara as they funnel into the tram lanes staff here showing them to slow down drivers telling each other to slow down we see a little bit of hand movement there uh, the off pole maybe getting pushed by the driver there in P4 Important that these drivers are communicating with each other like that as it looks like we're getting a nice slow roll here into the tram lanes from Danny O'Gara. Great form as we're looking for a green flag this time by Green, green, green. We are underway for the Mini Swift final here at IKC Round 2 at Whiteland Raceway Park. Danny O'Gara with a great jump there to get to the point as he's able to get clean racetrack and just take off. Side-by-side -side battle there for P2. Who's going to come away with it? Can't see in this screen yet who's come away with P2 from that side-by-side -side action. As they go down through the chicane into the Monza for the first time. All drivers look to be making it through cleanly as it looks like Gaddis is able to pull off P2. Side-by-side, -side, they were they were fighting for position there on that outlap. And Gaddis is able to make it stick for P2, but that's given O'Gara a massive gap here on this first lap. I would say about eight car lengths as they enter the straightaway. looks like a 1.3 second lead already for Danny O as he's going to check out and we're going to be able to focus a little bit more on this battle for second place between Gaddy and Fetchinger as they battle wheel to wheel for second and hopefully able to work together and push to run down O'Gara make it a three way battle for the lead of this race longer sessions here we're still six minutes away from getting the two to go here in the mini swift final six minutes left uh, before the two to go symbol so these drivers will have to navigate uh, a dry racetrack the cart will come to them as they are setting up hopefully for the long game here longer sessions the drivers maybe a little bit slick a little bit hard to control the carts in these few outlaps hoping the track and the go-kart comes to them as Gaddis goes purple that time by Dominic Gaddis goes purple with a 48.05 tenths of a second faster than O'Gara on his own and P1, five tenths of a second, they will close that gap quick to O'Gara. So we'll see if O'Gara can come back and make a good run at a lap this time by. But Dominic Gaddis with an absolute flyer from P2 that time by. Already within two car lengths of O'Gara. I wonder if we saw a mistake out of Gara there in that second lap. It allowed Gaddis to catch back up. Gaddis right to the rear bumper of O'Gara now. And we have ourselves a two-way battle for the lead working four minutes and 55 seconds left as the drivers come onto the straightaway to begin lap number three Gaddis to the rear bumper of O'Gara not looking to the inside Gaddis says I want let's go let's let's create a gap to p3 and let's race at the end of this race smart racecraft out of these young drivers showing so much composure at such a young age just 8 to 12 years old really really important to emphasize how talented these young drivers are with speeds reaching in excess of 50 miles an hour here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Really impressive to see not only how they navigate 
uh, the carts and, and race pace, but how they really navigate wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and racecraft and learning how to race with each other in a smart way as Gaddis just falls in line and chases O'Gara through that infield sector of the track. Working lap four as they come back onto the front straightaway. O'Gara, Gaddis, Fetchinger, Austin Taylor, and Titus Roberts rounds out your top five. Really starting to open up a little bit. A few battles going on as O'Gara has a little bit of a mistake there. Gaddis right to the rear bumper. He looks to the inside. O'Gara's got to give it to him. Good for Gaddis capitalizing on that mistake from O'Gara as they battle it through the infield sector back onto the back straightaway. Gaddis to the point already opening up a three car length lead. We'll see how O'Gara comes back from that. It's, you know, racing is as much a mental game as it is physical. And and for O'Gara to make that mistake, lose the lead, we'll see how quickly he recovers and is able to get back to the rear bumper of Dominic Gaddis as they work the infield sector of the old part of the circuit here. O'Gara with a good run through those double rights and back out onto the main straightaway, back within a car length or two of Gaddis as they work just two and a half tenths between Gaddis and O'Gara, a 1.7 second gap back to Will Fetchinger. So really we're looking at this battle here between one and two as long as these guys don't battle too much during the race Fetchinger does not have the pace to catch them it'll be a two-way battle if these guys start to race hard we're gonna see them lose pace and we might see Will Fetchinger catch back up Titus Roberts only about two tenths back from Fetchinger so this could really become a four-way battle pretty quickly as that Gaddis really maintaining that two-car gap impressive performance out of Gaddis really just able to get to the point capitalize on that infield mistake out of O'Gara and and really maintain position on the racetrack not giving up pace so hard for these young drivers you know we've talked about chasing the rabbit when a young driver has a, a driver in front of them to chase like Danny O has in this scenario they tend to be much quicker uh, Gaddis able to maintain that fast race pace out front by himself without anyone to chase really impressive as we see Gaddis go purple again, 47.180 for Gaddis. Not only is he fast, he's maintaining pace. Danny O'Gara just one-tenth of a second back that lap, really able to match pace, keeping it at about two-car length lead. From Gaddis to O'Gara, Fetchinger and Roberts maintaining the same position. Taylor P5, Hendrickson P6, working our way back. P7, Braun and Willie in P8, Bentley McCann in P9, Andrew Avalos rounding out your top 10, Dalton Sears P11, and Rhett Johnson bringing up the tail of the pack with that issue there on the opening lap. Looks like a change of positions there for Willie and Avalos, P8, P9, as they are working. One minute 12 to go. One minute 12 to go for Dominic Gaddis as he leads this pack of mini swift drivers onto the back straight through the Monza and into the short shoot. We'll see if Danny O has anything for him under braking. Is Danny O'Gara big lunge, not able to get anything done. Gains about a cart length under braking. Danny O'Gara able to run off of Gaddis's markers that he's setting through this infield sector of the track. Danny O is back to the rear bumper of Gaddis. We'll see if he has anything for him going into turn one. Gaddis with uh, O'Gara with a look to the inside. Gaddis stays wide. We'll see if Gaddis can make it stick around the outside. A little side bot action. O'Gara has to settle for P2. Gaddis is able to make it stick around the outside. Like we said, this wide part of the circuit really lends itself to defensive driving with Gaddis able to maintain position and get the inside line for the next corner after O'Gara tried to make that move going into turn one at the end of the straightaway. O'Gara right to the rear bumper of Gaddis. Let's see if he looks under braking here. No. O'Gara certainly picking up a little bit of time under breaking over Gaddis. We'll see if he's maybe saving that move for the end of the race. Doesn't want to show his hand too early as we are coming back onto the main straightaway now. Two laps to go for Dominic Gaddis and Danny O'Gara. Two laps. O'Gara shows his nose to the inside of Gaddis. Not able to get it done as Gaddis closes the door. O'Gara needs to commit to that move if he's going to make it stick with two laps to go. He needs to just make it happen and go or wait for that final lap as O'Gara takes a little bit too much curb there and loses a little bit of pace going on to the back straightaway. Gaddis with about a three car length lead as they go through the chicane and into the Monza Kern for the penultimate lap. Gaddis with a two car lead into braking. Danny O is going to close it up a little bit under braking. We've seen that this whole race. Danny O'Gara a little bit stronger under the brakes, able to close about a cart length and a half a lap between those two corners. 
Danny O'Gara right back to the rear bumper of Gaddis. We'll see white flags in the air if Danny O'Gara has anything for Gaddis as they go into the new sector of the track. Gaddis a little bit defensive to the inside. Danny O'Gara with the late apex. Let's see if he can set him up coming out of turn number two. Gaddis with a decent run out of turn two. Danny O'Gara wide set up. Make sure he gets the good run onto the back straightaway. O'Gara wants to be on the rear bumper of Gaddis as they go through the chicane into the Monza. And finally, we may see O'Gara show his hand as they go into that hairpin here. O'Gara a little bit more confident under braking. Let's see if O'Gara looks to the inside. No, he's going to stay in line. One more corner to get it done. Can Danny O'Gara put it to the inside Gaddis as they go into the double rights? <coughs> O'Gara with a little bit too much curb. A learning opportunity here for O'Gara. A little bit too much curb. Lost a little bit of pace. Dominic Gaddis, your main event winner here in Mini Swift. Danny O'Gara P2, Will Fetchinger P3, and MPG Race Factory 1, 2, 3 again in the mini category. Titus Roberts P4, Austin Taylor rounding out your top five. Kaysen Hendrickson and Dylan Braun, 6th and 7th, 8th, Lincoln Wiley and Benton McCann in ninth. Andrew Avalos P10, Dalton Sears P11, and Rhett Johnson rounding out your top 12 here in the mini swift category. Can't wait to see some of the replays from this race as the action was great from start to finish here for the Mini Swift category. Again, drivers just 8 to 12 years old, really displaying some great racecraft. As we take a look here back at the start, Danny O'Gara with an amazing start off the point with that start box procedure here from the NKA rulebook, able to get the deserving jump. And we see a little bit of position lost there for our race winner on the start, had to fight his way back up into P2. Then back to the rear bumper of Danny O'Gara, a few mistakes is all it took. And Gaddis with a little look to the inside, not able to get it done there. Gaddis really taking advantage of a bobble there from O'Gara. Able to put his nose to the inside and make it happen into turn number two. That was the deciding pass for the race there for Gaddis. O'Gara able to stay with Gaddis. A few looks at it there on the final lap. Not able to get it done as Gaddis is able to defend on the outside. Maintain the inside line for the next corner here. Advantage Gaddis, man, great racecraft, able to defend that pass from O'Gara. O'Gara here to the inside again. Not enough commitment from O'Gara to get halfway up on Gaddis. And we're going to see Gaddis walk away with this one as O'Gara takes just a little bit too much curb there on the final lap, and Gaddis is able to get it done. Double checkers for Gaddis, your winner. And final number one for Mini Swift here at round two of the IKC. Welcome back for the final of 206 Heavy here for round number two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Drivers nice and slow as they head onto the straightaway. Killer, killer heat race for Geist leading our field here on the pole position. Able to come back from, I believe, seventh position and bring home the heat race win. Hard fought. Good battles in this group from the heat race. Can't wait to see what we get out of them for today's final event here in the morning groups. Geist brings them into the tram lanes. We're looking for green this time by. Nice slow start. And we're green underway for the 206 Heavy Final at IKC Round 2 at Whiteland Raceway Park. Geist with a good jump to the point. Able to set up wide. A little bit too much open area there as we see the battle side by side for P2. Who's going to come away on the back straightaway? It looks like McCorkendale, I believe, with a good jump on the start. Able to work his way up to P2. Raw pace to catch Geist. We saw a little bit of an issue from McCorkendale. We'll see if he didn't get that issue sorted out as there's a driver through the grass into the Monza. Big off for a driver further back in the pack, able to keep it under control. Hopefully not gain any positions there as they enter the Monza. They're working lap number one here. Geist still out to the front. I believe that is McCorkendale to P2, able to make up some positions there on that outlap. 
as we will see them start to come through. Yes, that is McCorkendale P2. We'll see if he has the raw pace this time to keep up with Geist, who is absolutely the driver to beat in that first heat race today. Six minutes left in this session. The finals for 206 Heavy. Round two of the IKC. 206 Heavy. Uh, senior class, ages 15 and up, as it looks like McCorkendale is able to get to the rear bumper already of Geist. We'll see if he decides to make something happen early or if he is patient enough to push and have a little two-cart breakaway from the rest of that pack. Always uh, we'll see the mature, more experienced drivers be patient with their racing. You don't want to battle too early in a race and, and check up the, the group and have the group behind you catch you. You definitely, when you're running a race like this, you want to work your way down to a two- or three-cart battle at the end uh, without the opportunity to lose too many positions. As we see Matt Geist and Evan McCorkendale there, nose to tail. McCorkendale goes purple that time by Adam Deitz in P3, Tony Troy Tony in P4, Ronald Swift rounding out your top five. As we see a yellow flag there, driver off in turn number four. Driver off, we'll get a gap here, get him back on the track and get him going with the help of our Indy Karting Challenge staff, getting him back on track safely. It looks like that was possibly Nicholson, 313, uh, Bailey, actually, I'm sorry, Bailey, 313, off the track there in turn four. So we get back up to this lead gaddle here with Geist and McCorkendale, nose to tail. I'm willing to bet we won't see too much battling as we work five minutes to go in this first half of the final. They're going to push each other and try to gap Dites, Tony, and Swift there from three through fifth. They don't want that second group to be able to catch them. As McCorkendale, again, purple with a 50.74, lapping just one-tenth quicker than Geist. And we talk about chasing the rabbit for the kids. It's it's common to see in seniors and masters classes too. So we see here the seniors, McCorkendale, maybe a little bit more pace over Geist, just chasing the rabbit, having a go-kart in front of him to hunt down under braking, hunt down these tighter sections of the track, making him just a little bit faster on the timeline on the scoreboard here in the Alpha Race Hub timing app. Alpha Race Hub, the official timing app of Whiteland Raceway Park and the Indy Karting Challenge. Get the Alpha Race Hub app for free on iOS and Android now to follow along on live timing as we work through these events all season long. Geist working three and a half minutes left as he leads McCorkendale, Tony, and Dietz on the straightaway in this 206 heavy final. McCorkendale showing tons of patience, able to match pace with Geist here. I'm willing to bet. He is just biding his time to make the big move here at the end of the race. Smart racecraft out of Evan McCorkendale and that red and white Burrell ART machine. Geist, a little bit lower in the cart, a little bit more aerodynamic. Not quite the advantage here in 206 at a track like Whiteland, but it will affect the way the cart handles in the infield as we see McCorkendale really pick up a little bit of pace through this tighter sector of the track, a little bit more weight transfer, unload that inside rear tire of the race car, and get them up over the curb and able to maintain speed. And these 206s, it is all about momentum. And McCorkendale has just that. McCorkendale and Geist as they are breaking away three seconds back to Troy Tony in P3. Geist leads McCorkendale through the Monza. Just over two minutes to go in this final. Two minutes plus two laps for Matt Geist and McCorkendale as they work lap number five. Matt Geist, a little bit of a bobble there through the infield. A little bit too much curb as it looks like we're catching Nick Bailey. A little bit of lap traffic. Corner workers display the blue flag to Bailey. Does Bailey know they're coming through? Bailey absolutely great class out of Bailey there leaving the inside line open for these guys hats off to Bailey letting the lap traffic get through quick Matt Geist McCorkendale will live to race another lap McCorkendale a little bit too much curb there doesn't seem to affect the full-size carts as much as it does the kids as they get a good run onto the back straight away Matt Geist and Evan McCorkendale putting on a clinic almost a four second lead back to Troy Tony and P3 a good little battle going on, though. Troy Tony and Adam Dietz and Ronald Swift just a few tenths off of one another in that battle for third position. So that as that battle heats up, we'll definitely want to check back in with them and see 
but we definitely don't want to lose Matt Geist here and McCorkendale in the move for the lead. One minute to go. Geist puts a little, or McCorkendale puts a little look on Geist. Geist will have the inside line going into two, not able to make it stick. McCorkendale moves into the lead. Matt Geist to P2. McCorkendale says, let's go, buddy. He must have had a little bit more raw pace than Geist and said, now's the time. 46 seconds left. This will be probably we're on four to go right now. I'm willing to bet we'll get three to go this next time by from our head starters here at Whiteland Raceway Park. McCorkendale, big slide into the hairpin, into the infield. That cart looking so free right now, late in the race, really well set up as we see Matt Geist able to maintain position right there to the rear bumper of McCorkendale. This race is not over, guys. We are working 26 seconds left to go. This is going to be three laps to go as we see Geist look to the inside of McCorkendale into turn one. Geist is through. Swap them back. Geist to P1, McCorkendale to P2. Man, what an awesome battle here in 206 Heavy as these drivers putting on an absolute clinic in racecraft. McCorkendale with a good push there on Geist rear bumper as they go through. A little bit of a helmet adjustment as they go down the back straightaway. McCorkendale pushing Geist. We'll see if he decides to throw a move there into that hairpin. No. Geist still with the point. A little bit narrow entry there for Geist. A little bit defensive through this infield section. Three laps to go. It's a little bit early to defend. And that may cost him as McCorkendale is not going to be as patient. Two to go from our starter this time by for Matt Geist. Corkendale, a little look to the inside, not going to do it. Going to funnel back in line and save the move for the last lap. Corkendale, smart racecraft out of these guys. Seasoned veterans, Matt Geist to the point. Good wide setup to get a big run onto that back straightaway. Too much curb there again for Matt Geist. These curbs, brand new this weekend for Whiteland Raceway Park. Put in over the last week, so... Something these drivers are going to have to learn to navigate. These big CIK style curbs can upset these carts, especially in the lower horsepower 206 platforms. We're going to see too much curb really affect the way these go karts maintain power and maintain center off roll speed as we watch McCorkendale look for an opening here on Matt Geist. They're working two to go. Coming to the line now. White flag is out for Matt Geist. Does McCorkendale have anything for him as they come down the straightaway? McCorkendale looks to the inside. Uh, McCorkendale's through. Geist a little wide into the marbles there in the exit of turn one. McCorkendale through to the point with about a two-car length lead as they work through this infield sector onto the back straightaway. Let's see if Geist can get back to the rear bumper and have anything for McCorkendale as he gets a beautiful move to the inside. Geist ran him down low. Just a little too low for Geist to maintain power and get the good run out of the corner. Great racecraft for McCorkendale to make that move stick. Back into the hairpin for the last time. A little too hard into that hairpin for Geist. Loose a little bit of pace at the exit. And McCorkendale has a two-car length lead as they work these last few corners of the infield. Amazing racing here out of McCorkendale and Geist, guys. 206 heavy final winner, Evan McCorkendale. Matt Geist, hard-fought P2. As we see the battle come in here, Adam Deitz. P3, Ronald Swift, P4, Troy, Tony rounding out your top five. Taryn Swanson, P6, Kaylor Nicholson, P7, Kenneth Owens rounding out your top eight. We're still waiting to see Zach Claybaugh and Nick Bailey come around to the line. <coughs> but guessing they will finish in that order. Zach Claybaugh, ninth, Nick Bailey, P10, as the drivers cut over to leave the racing circuit here. Nick Bailey a few laps down after that early issue off track. Nick Bailey, we see him cross the line now. Great racing from McCorkendale and Geist. Wow, what an epic battle as we see the 206 Heavy Final wrap up here for round two of the IKC at Whiteland Raceway Park. Let's take a look back at some of the moments here from the 206 Heavy Final at Whiteland Raceway Park as we see Geist with a big jump there. McCorkendale inside, a little bit of pressure from the inside there from McCorkendale, able to get through to P2. Big off from the driver further back into the Monza, able to hang on to it. Those guys, as we see these drivers now coming back around, we have an off from Bailey 
lead driver is able to get through. McCorkendale here with a good pace to the back of Geist. Really smart racecraft. These guys waiting to the end of the race and able to make it happen. As we see these drivers in the next group come onto the circuit, this is K.A. Jr. And they will get the nod through to the cutoff here on their formation lap from race officials here at IKC. K.A. Junior category here at the Indy Karting Challenge, one of our bigger classes. Junior class, 12 to 15 years of age for these young drivers. 100cc, IAMI, USA, East Power Plants. The K.A. stands for Karting Australia. It actually replaced the Clubman Yamaha product, which was popular from the 80s through to the early 2000s. And now we see these engines kind of becoming the standard in air-cooled two-stroke racing across the country as we see Buer and more lead these drivers here to the line for the start of this main event nice and slow much more experience out of these young drivers in the front row here in ka jr as they'll come to the line checked up as we get our pulse sitter looking for the green flag into the start box into the tram lanes and we are green flag racing for ka jr main event round number two the ikc a little bit of side-by-side -side action there towards the back. 820 of Landon Buer gets a good jump to the point. Lost the teammate in the shuffle. Landon Buer to P1. We'll have to see who that is. I believe that's Van Dick in the uh, in the Tony cart there. Got up to P2 on that outlap. We'll see when they come back around on the alpha timing and scoring app where they shook out to. Great start here from Buer. Able to get to the point and avoid a little bit of the side-by-side -side carnage here. As we see a couple cars turn around there in the hairpin, trying to navigate this outlap. As Buer makes it back to the point, working lap number two. Buer with a five tenths of a second lead over 79 of Van Dyck in P2. AJ Stoner worked his way up to P3 here, just a few tenths there off of P2. So we'll see. If Buer is able to create a little gap here early on, or if they are going to be nose to tail here for the KA Junior Final at Whiteland Raceway Park. Yellow flags are out in the Monza as we see another driver make an error in that chicane at the end of the straightaway. These carts much faster than the 206 categories that we've seen race the rest of the day here as we get that ticker going dane van dick p2 aj stoner p3 christopher utzi up to p4 cammy fisher rounding out your top five and kennedy tracy with a big lunge on these outlaps worked her way all the way up to p6 and cart number 825 the mpg race factory cards showing some awesome pace here in ka jr as they work the third lap five minutes to go and the final event here in IKC, round number two for KA Junior. We are seeing these lead carts bunch up as Christopher Utzi and AJ Stoner working their way to the back of Buer and Van Dick as they lead their way around through the infield sector back out onto the main straightaway. If we get any sort of battling out of these lead two, that second group is certainly going to catch them as Buer knows Van Dick's behind him. A little bit of a narrow entry there into turn one. You were already defensive through the infield. That's surely going to let A.J. Stoner and Christopher Utzi catch back up to this lead pack and make it a four-way battle for the win here in K.A. Jr. Excellent racing to be had in this category with these carts reaching speeds in excess of 60 miles an hour here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Buer a little bit early on the brakes over Dane and P2 as it looks like they are able to gap a little bit there to A.J. Stoner and Christopher Utzi, about six-tenths of a second between P2 and P3 on timing as they're working four minutes to go. Four minutes plus two laps for Landon Buer as we work lap number four, I believe. Lap number four, Landon Buer able to put some clean laps together. A little bit of curb there doesn't affect these 
IME power plant carts as much as it does the 206s in the last session. A little bit of curb is okay with these guys. These drivers may be a little bit more used to the CIK format curbs that were installed this week at Whiteland Raceway Park. A little bit less disrupting to the cart for these guys. As we see Buer with a nice little five race car lead as Christopher Utsi makes his way through on AJ Stoner up into P3. Utsi to P3 closes the gap to Dane Van Dyck. We'll see where they come across pace-wise this time by. Right now, Utsi with a fast lap on lap number two goes purple with a 44.7. That is three-tenths of a second faster than our current race leader in 44.7. We were not even into the 44 second laps yet, 45.1. So we'll see. There's a chance if Utsi and Dane work together, they can catch your leader in this race. Viewer with a good run out onto the main straightaway as we see. Dane back to P2, Utsi to P3. Dane and Utsi will want to keep the battling to a minimum so they can run down Landon Buer here if they want any shot at this main event win. Two minutes and two laps to go as we work lap number six for Landon Buer. Landon Buer with a great run onto the back straightaway through the chicane and into the Monza here at Whiteland Raceway Park. A little bit sideways there for Dane as... Looks like Christopher Utsi is going to capitalize on that mistake in the Monza from Dane Van Dyck. Utsi back to P2. Christopher Utsi with a good run onto the main straightaway. They lost a little bit of time there to Buer with the battling. Hopefully these guys show some discipline, show some patience, and work together as they try to catch Landon Buer, who has been point to point so far on the day in K.A. Jr. in that Race Factory MPG machine out front. Christopher Utsi in the green and white Tony Car P2 with a great run onto the back straightaway. Catches up to Landon Buer as they work through that Monza turn. Big gain under braking there for Christopher Utsi. That cart looks to be set up really well. Nice and free through the infield section of the circuit. And tons of mid-corner and exit pace as we see him get another good run onto the straightaway. Able to suck up to within about one car length of Landon Buer as we're working 56 seconds with a look to the inside. A little bit of a side pod there. And Christopher Utsi gets it done on Landon Buer. Let's see if Landon's able to get back underneath him as they work this infield sector of the track. Christopher Utsi to the point in cart number 833 as they head onto the back straightaway. Utsi purple that time by with a 44.6. Absolute raw pace over Landon Brewer. Still running 42, 45.2 second lap that last time by Christopher Utsi. Let's see if he can maintain that race pace without the rabbit to chase. Now that he's out front, nobody in front of him, just clean racetrack, clean air. We'll see if Utsi's able to maintain that pace as Brewer, a little bit of a chip on his shoulder about that pass. He's going to be able to catch right back up to Utsi in turn number one. Buer not giving up any time to Utsi. As Buer goes fastest, 44.52. There we see it, chasing the rabbit in action as Buer, all he needed. A little bit of motivation from Utsi, and he's into the 44 seconds. Two tenths of a second a lap quicker than Utsi's fastest lap. 44.5 for Landon Buer as they work lap number nine. Three laps to go here in the KA Junior Final in the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. And a few bobbles there from Buer. Going to open up a bit of a gap to Utsi in the Tony Kart. We'll see. If Buer can suck him back in here, two laps to go for Chris Utsi as they work the next sector here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Buer a little bit quicker under the brakes there as Utsi works his way into the infield. Nice wide setups for Utsi. Nothing to worry about. No pressure from Bueller yet. As we see Utsi, a little bit of a look back there. See where Landon Buer is. And he's got about 10 race cars back to Landon Buer as they work through the chicane and into the Monza. Good battle there for P3 between Dick and AJ Stoner as well as we get back up to the action here. Utsi and Buer, two laps to go as they work through the infield sector. Now down to one lap. Does Landon Buer have anything for Chris Utsi as they work their way back onto the main straightaway? White flag is out for Chris Utsi. 
About five race cars back to Landon Buer as Buer's good on the brakes way deep into turn one. Picks off about four of those car lines just under braking. Landon Buer running down Chris Hutzi as they work their way through the infield sector. Lightning pace from Landon Buer reeling in all that, all that gap. Landon Buer within two car lengths. Let's see if he's close enough for coming out of the Mazda to make something happen into the hairpin. Landon Buer, big run, a little bit defensive from Utsi. That's going to allow Buer to catch back up. Utsi, a little bit defensive, may have just cost himself the race as Buer's right to the rear bumper and inside. He's through. Landon Buer to P1. Utsi looks back, doesn't make it happen. Buer takes the checkered flag. And K Jr. here in the IKC at Whiteland Raceway Park. Chris Utsi, what an amazing performance to come home P2. <coughs> Dane Van Dick rounds out your top three. AJ Stoner, P4, was a great run. Ryan Mort, P5. Charlie Myers rounding out your top six. Kennedy Tracy with a good charge up towards the front, ending up P7. As these drivers roll over to the cut through, Fister, P8. Laser, P9. Braun, P10. Patton, P11. And Johnson rounding out your top 12. We're going to take a quick replay here as we watch these guys side by side. A little bit of side pod action on the start of that race. Buer able to get a good jump there going out of turn one. A little bit too much curve there for Buer. And that is able to make these other drivers catch back up. Hard to know exactly where they're going to shake out as we start these races. Utsi there in P3 as we watch him make the move here for second. Big dive to the inside. Nice and clean for Utsi as he's going to work his way up through the field. Great run to catch up to Buer. There's the first pass for the lead. Buer not able to make it stick around the outside. Good defensive move for UT to get down to the inside of the track there and take over the point. Here's the move for the win. Buer just a little bit of a gap there. Goes for it up the inside. Side by side. UT tries the crossover. Sets him up. Not able to make the move there. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact onto the straightaway. And Buer is able to come home. Your KA Junior winner. Here at round two of the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. Excellent action there from our K Junior category as we await our next group to come on the track here. 206 Light set to take their final, our last final event of the morning rotation. 206 Light, great battle earlier in the heat race from this group. Great lead pack action, and we can't wait to see it underway here momentarily at Whiteland Raceway Park. Two oh six light main event here rounding out the infield onto the front straightaway. They'll funnel into the tram lanes looking for green this time by our pole sitter. Ready to funnel in and see if we can't kick this race off. Great action in heat number one from this group. We'll see if we can get it again a little bit faster as we roll the line here. Green flag racing is underway here in 206 light main event. Eli Fox with a big move there to get that new gen motorsports car up to P2 as we see him run down your leader. We'll be able to get those names here as soon as we get the alpha timing and scoring app picked up when they come around for P1. Great battle there in the midfield section through the Monza and into the hairpin. We'll see some side-by-side -side action into the hairpin and see who comes out. All carts funneling through there nice and polite single file as we work lap number one. We'll come around here onto the main straightaway, start lap number two, 
and get you guys a little bit of a better idea on how that opening lap shook out. Wilbur to the point in P1, Fox P2, Heber up into the top three, Landon P4, Johnson back to P5. We'll look for him to move forward in that Amex machine just a little bit here in this long six and a half minute final. Six minutes left plus two laps for your leader Wilbur as they work through the infield onto the back straightaway. Good pace, good mid-center speed for Wilbur as he creates a two and a half car gap back to Eli Fox there in that new gen machine working their way through the new section back into the old part of the circuit through the Monza into the hairpin. These 206s really perform well on tight parts of the circuit like this so Great to see the battles through this infield sector as the carts are on the clutch. Back out of the infield, onto the straightaway, working lap number three in 206 light. Levi Wilbur with a great little three-car gap back to Eli Fox. Braden Heber working P3, only six-tenths of a second back. Kyle Landon again went purple that time by. And P4, Landon back there working his way up to the mid-pack. Braden Johnson, same thing in that AMAX powered car. Working his way onto the back straight. Good pace. We'll see if they can't catch these lead two of Levi Wilbur and Eli Fox as we work this longer main event here in 206 Light. Levi Wilbur working lap number three just ahead of Eli Fox. These guys matching pace as they work around the inside sector of this racetrack. The 206s really shine in the tight parts of this race course as Eli makes his way back up to the rear bumper of Wilbur. Maybe a little bit of a better setup here for Eli Fox. Cart starting to come in about three to four laps in. Wilbur set up for the cart to come in quick, hoping to get a little gap. Not going to happen. Eli Fox right to the rear bumper as they head into that hairpin into the old sector of the track. Fox stays in P2, but there's no gap now between Levi and Eli Fox. And they're going to work their way out onto the main straightaway. Eli Fox with about a two-car length gap from Levi Wilbur, your race leader right now in 206 light. Little loose there into turn one for Levi Wilbur, a little bit of a slide as Eli Fox closes that gap back up through that infield sector. And we are getting a purple lap further down in the pack. Stancombe with a 49.1, two tenths faster than your race leader right now for Stancombe. Dominic Stancombe really putting the pace there, working his way back from 10th. Will he have enough to work his way into the top five as this race goes on with raw pace like that? He just might. As we go back to the lead group here, Levi Wilbur holding off Eli Fox early on in this race. Again, tons of maturity out of these drivers. They're going to want to delay the battle and keep it a two-way race. The last thing they want is for Braden Heber and Kyle Landon to catch them during the course of this race. So they're going to hold off on racing for position. Eli Fox says, I'm fine staying here in P2. Let's just push a little bit, get away from these guys. And then we can duke it out here at the end of the race. Two and a half minutes to go, plus two laps for Levi Wilbur as they work. Lap number five here on the final at Whiteland Raceway Park. Eli Fox to the rear bumper of Levi Wilbur as they work through that new part of the track into the old sector. Tight double right hairpin here. As you see, the cart's a little bit of a slide. 206 is important to keep the cart free as they don't have the power to recover from that weight transfer. So they want to keep the carts free and as loose as possible. You'll see the cart slide just a little bit through some of these corners as Levi Wilbur able to click off a good lap there, pull about a 3.5 tenth lead out of uh, Eli Fox there in P2. Braden Heber, a 1.7 second gap between P2 and P3. So this is quickly becoming a two-horse race as we see Levi and Eli Fox able to break away from the rest of this group just on raw pace alone. Purple time still towards the back of the pack. 49.0 from Justin Iano. Back further in the pack. Gage in the cart number 48 able to go purple this session. And the final race pace is good. We're seeing Stancombe, who had the purple lap, not move. 
outside of that top 10. We're going to see if he can work his way up a little bit as Kyle Landon makes his way into P3. A little bit of change of position there. Braden Heber lost the spot to Kyle Landon in that infield sector of the track. Landon up to P3. Eli Fox, P2. Levi Wilbur still at the point in P1. Six laps in. One minute plus two laps to go as we work round number two of the Indy Karting Challenge here at Whiteland Raceway Park. Two oh six senior light here presented by Dryer Vent. Great battles up front, really through the whole pack as we see that battle for third place heating up. Braden Johnson able to pick up a spot into P4, it looks like. Yep, Braden Johnson over Braden Heber into P4. Getting that AMAX powered race car up near the top three in striking distance of a podium as we see Levi Wilbur begin to check out a little bit on Eli Fox. I may have spoke too soon about Eli getting the setup. Seems that Wilbur's having the late pace here in this final event as we see some good battle there for P3 again and P4 as it looks like Heber able to take that spot back from Braden Johnson back to the lead group as we see Levi Wilbur with that four car length lead working the infield sector of the old track ticker is gone so I am guessing we are gonna see two laps to go here from our starter this time by and there it is two to go for Levi Wilbur and Eli Fox Man, big shake up there in that second group. Kyle Landon up to P3. Braden Johnson, P4. Braden Heber back to P5. They are shaking and baking as they get ready for that battle on the last two laps here for P3. The last seat on the podium. Anything should happen here between Levi and Wilbur. These guys in the second group, they want to keep pushing as hard as they can and take advantage of anything that comes their way. Eli Fox only about seven tenths now behind Levi Wilbur. So Levi Wilbur's opened up a healthy little gap there for P1. We'll see if Eli can make anything happen here on these last two laps as Eli w Levi Wilbur just clicking laps off. Kyle Landon still maintaining P3 there about two and a half seconds back. Braden Johnson to the inside. Braden Johnson to P3 as they come into the last lap. This is a great battle here, guys, for P3. Braden Johnson, Braden Heber, and Kyle Landon all the way back to P5 as they work for that last podium spot. Levi Wilbur working through the infield and out of turn number four onto the back straightaway. Good run for Levi Wilbur as he creates a almost full second gap to Eli Fox in the last few laps. Levi Wilbur with excellent end of race pace here as he's able to open up a comfortable little gap. Comfortable lead from Eli Fox. Braden Johnson in P3. We'll see if he can keep it. Braden Johnson a little defensive. A little defensive into turn number seven. We'll see if Braden Johnson's able to hold off the fighting Braden harder as they go through the infield. But back out onto the main straightaway. Double chargers fly for your race winner, Levi Wilbur in 206 light. P2, Eli Fox, Braden Johnson able to hold off the charging Braden Heber for P3. And Kyle Landon rounding out your top five. Clay Settles, P6. Howerton, P7. Dominic Stancomb, early race uh, fast lap leader. 717 comes in P8, Gavin Baird P9, Gage, Justin Iano, and P10, Jared Howarden working at P11, Kyler Peebles P12, Ethan Williams making up a spot there on the last lap for P3. This looks like cart number 21 of Nick Patton issues for him as he approaches the checkered flag, and Riley Baldwin a few laps down there after those early issues on track. That will round out. Our 206 light action for the day. We're going to get a few replays of that action here in a moment. And then we are going to take an intermission on the broadcast as we will get our race staff fed and get back on track for the second half. The afternoon groups live on Cart Chaser. Here we see these groups a little bit quick as they come down to the start finish line. Funnel into those tram lanes. They get the green flag. Good pace out front early on for our race winner Wilbur as he is able to lead Eli Fox almost the entire race without any con confrontation at all from Eli just not able to quite get to his rear bumper the action really between Braden Johnson Heber and Landon from P3 to P5 was the highlight of the event as we see some good inside moves there for Johnson and that Amax machine 
And, oh, there's what happened on the last lap. A little bit too much of these new CIK curbs and cost them the position. So thank you, everyone, for watching the morning groups of finals here in the Indy Karting Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. My name's Trisha Marsh, and we'll be back this afternoon for the afternoon races live on Car Chaser. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com.